All right, watch this. Okay, how many pens are going to be in my hand next time? If you said four, you're correct. Being able to, how'd you get this? Well, you, you probably saw I had one pen every time, and one, two, three, four, and you, you saw that I had more pens, you figure the next time I'm going to have four. Being able to recognize those patterns is key to understanding your math here. So let's look at a few other things. Let's look at this pattern. I want to search for a pattern here and figure out what the next one in this pattern is going to be. So this is the first, the second, and the third. Now looking at these shapes, what's my fourth pattern going to be? Well this first shape here is a triangle. and I know a triangle has three sides. And the second shape is a square, and a square has four sides. And last shape is a pentagon, and a pentagon has five sides. So following this pattern, my next shape is probably going to be a hexagon, and that's going to have six sides. And a hexagon will look something like this. Six sides. All right, let's look at a different pattern. So what I have here is I have three shapes, one, two, and three. And I want to search for a pattern again. Well, if I'm looking at those patterns, I notice, let's break this down. Every pattern has a red dot in the middle. So I'm going to take a red dot, and that's going to be in the middle of my pattern. Now, what's going on with this pattern? Well, it looks like i got four yellow lines, and they keep growing each time, and they're going by one. So looking at the fourth number in this pattern, it's going to look like this third shape here. But I'm going to take an extra block and add it on to each leg. So this will be the fourth shape in the pattern. Now. Uh, let's, we can apply our knowledge to patterns to actually create algebraic expressions here. So you can make an expression to represent the number of blocks in each shape, or in the next shape. But before we talk about algebraic expressions, let's talk about the vocabulary here. Now, we're going to be talking about variables. And what's a variable? Well, a variable, it's usually a symbol, and you usually see it as a letter, and it represents some number, and that number can change. So you might see variables as x or y, or sometimes Z, sometimes N, could be any letter. Constants, constants are just some number and they do not change. 2 is a constant, 50 is a constant, negative 5 is a constant. It's a number, it doesn't change. Now an algebraic expression is going to be a math phrase that contains at least one variable and it can contain constants or whatever it, it needs to. So an example for an algebraic expression would be X plus 5 or maybe 2y minus 3, or maybe negative 100 uh, divided by uh, 5y. Could be anything like this. These are all algebraic expressions. One key thing for expressions is they have no equal sign. If you see an equal sign, that's going to be an equation. All right. So let's take our, our algebraic expressions. Let's apply that to one of those pattern problems. I want to go back to this pattern. So how many boxes are going to be in the 20th figure? Well, we see the first three, and we know there's some pattern. So I want to figure out how many boxes will be in the 20th, and I want to write an expression for the nth figure, so some variable. One way to do this is to create a table. So I'm going to create a table with three columns here. The first column here, I'm going to call our, our count. This is what figure we're on. This will be also called our input. Now on the right-hand column, I'm going to call this the total number of boxes, so our total and this is our output. Now let's start counting. So for our input, now our count, we're going to start at 1. And how many boxes are in 1? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be 5 boxes. Number 2, we're going to have how many boxes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then for number 3, I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 13. So 13 boxes. So what's going on here with this pattern? Now, if you're looking at this, you notice on the output, we go up by 4 every time. And our count, we're going up by 1 every time. So every time we increase by 1 on the input, we're increasing the output by 4. Another way to say this is 4 times the input, so 1 in this case, and plus the number 1 is going to add up to 5. So 4 times the input plus another 1 is going to be 5. For the next count, it's 4 times 2 plus 1 will be 9. And then 4 times 3 plus 1 will be 13. 
So if I take this pattern and go all the way to 20, it's going to be 4 times 20 plus 1, and that's going to equal 81. So how many boxes are in the 20th figure? 81. Now if I want to write an expression for the nth figure, well, just take this pattern. Instead of 20, our input's now going to be n, so it'll be 4 times n plus 1, and that's our expression there. So the expression is going to be 4 times n plus 1. So 4n plus 1. Okay, last example. So this is a graph here. And if I, I want to, I have 17 inches of fish. What is the smallest tank I can use to fit these fish in? So I'm looking at this graph. And on the x-axis is our combined length of fish in inches. And on the y-axis is our capacity of the tank in gallons. Now, okay, my graph, I want to do 17 inches, but there's no 17 on this graph. It doesn't go that far. We can figure that out if we figure out the pattern. So I'm going to make a table again. And on the left-hand side is going to be my input, which is going to be my length of fish. So I'm going to say it's my length, and this is the input. On the right-hand side, it's going to be my capacity in gallons. So I'm going to say capacity. And that's also my output. And let's start filling numbers in the columns right here. So I can pick any, any length right here, any length on this line. Well, I'm going to start with 4 right here. So 4 is going to be my first length. And at 4, the point's right here, and the capacity is going to be 6 gallons. Let's try the next number, 5. So 5's right here, the dot's right here, and that's going to be between 6 and 8, so 7. So 5 and 7. Let's try 6. 6 goes up it's right here. It's going to be 6. We're going to have 8 gallons. So what's the pattern going on here? Well, I notice the capacity is going up by 1 every time. An input, in these cases, is also going up by 1. So that means the, the, the formula for this is going to be whatever this input is. So it's going to be 4. Since it's always increasing by 1, you just the pattern is going to be 4 plus 2 is 6. And then 5 plus 2 is 7 and just 6 plus 2 will be 8. So if I want to find seven, fit 17 inches of fish, I'm going to take this pattern go down to 17. So the next one's going to be 17 plus 2, and that's going to be 19 gallons. So the smallest tank I can have is 19 gallons. All right, that's it.